It started as just another drone flight over the endless sands of the Sahara until something strange appeared on camera. The greatest hunting ground for dinosaurs and, in fact, ancient humans. It's like being on another planet. Unexplained bones, the way they're positioned, and much more that have confused everyone. There are more questions still out there about GoPro than we have answers. Could this be evidence of secret experiments hidden in one of the world's most remote regions? The CIA supported Young Psychiatrist experiment. Has, has mind control been achieved? Let's take a closer look at the footage that's got the world's attention. The mysterious discovery of Gobero. In 2000, Paul Serino, a paleontologist with a knack for unearthing dinosaur bones, embarked on an expedition. His team was searching for ancient fossils when an unexpected discovery changed everything. As they explored a series of small dunes, photographer Mike Hetwer stumbled upon human bones, potsherds, beads, arrowheads, and other artifacts scattered across the sandy surface. They were in the vicinity of what would be recognized as one of the world's most significant archaeological sites, Gobero, Africa's largest Stone Age burial ground. But could these skeletons be from back then, or were these from the rumored secret experiments by the government no one saw coming? Like and subscribe right now and you'll have amazing luck for the rest of the week. The initial survey was done by drone and it revealed an unbelievable concentration of artifacts and skeletal remains, indicating a rich history buried beneath the relentless sands of the Sahara. Over the years, as Sereno and his team returned to the site, they uncovered the remains of more than 200 burials. These discoveries offered a glimpse into a time when the Sahara was not the desert we know today, but a lush, green landscape full of life. Among the most interesting finds here were the remains of a woman and two children found in a tender embrace, raising questions about their lives and deaths. Their arrangement suggested a tragic end, prompting speculation about whether they had drowned or something else happened that took their lives together. By their skeletons, they looked like they were healthy. Their teeth suggest the same, but somehow they all ended up suffering the same fate at the same time. But the bigger question is, who buried them like this? Why did they arrange them this way? Was it just how they did things back in the day? Or were they victims of an experiment that we'll never know about? Want to learn about more strange secret experiments? Like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We've got a lot more where that came from. Which one is cuter? Like for the dog, comment for the cat like the shocking case of MK Ultra. The patients knew nothing of a cascade of mind control experiments underway, including sensory deprivation and worse. Initiated by the CIA in the 1950s, MK Ultra was a secret experiment project aimed at developing mind control techniques. This program officially began during the Cold War a time full of intense geopolitical tensions and a growing fear that adversaries could manipulate or control human behavior. The CIA was particularly concerned about the potential for Soviet brainwashing tactics and sought to explore ways to counteract such strategies. Because of all of that, they needed an initiative that combined psychological experimentation with pharmaceutical research, and MKUltra became just that. At its core, MKUltra involved a range of controversial methods, primarily focusing on the administration of psychoactive drugs. One of the most infamous substances used in the program was LSD. Researchers sought to study the effects of these substances on behavior, cognition, and memory. They were particularly interested in whether drugs could be used to induce confessions or alter the perception of reality. The experimentation often took place without the consent of the subjects, who included civilians, military personnel, and patients in hospitals. These subjects were often exposed to high doses of drugs in an attempt to assess their psychological responses, leading to adverse effects, including anxiety, paranoia, and severe psychological trauma. Trauma that they all lived with for the rest of their lives. 
In addition to drug administration, some subjects were subjected to extreme psychological torture and sensory deprivation. Techniques included the use of isolation tanks, which deprived individuals of sensory input for extended periods, and various forms of psychological manipulation aimed at breaking down a person's mental state. And they did just that. As the program progressed, it became increasingly clear that the methods employed were unethical and often harmful. The project was eventually exposed in the 1970s, leading to significant public outrage and congressional hearings. Investigations revealed the extent of unethical practices and violations of personal rights, especially the lack of informed consent. The Senate hearings highlighted the darker aspects of government-sponsored psychological research and prompted a national conversation about the ethical boundaries of scientific experimentation. Public trust in the government was significantly shaken as details emerged about the extent of the CIA's secret activities. Many documents related to MKUltra were deliberately destroyed, resulting in a legacy that's a lot more mysterious than it would have been otherwise. The destruction of records has made it difficult to fully understand the impact of the program. While some information has been declassified, significant portions remain classified or lost, leaving many questions unanswered. Project Blue Book Project Blue Book was a United States Air Force program that operated from 1952 to 1969 aimed at investigating reports of unidentified flying objects. Established during a period of heightened interest in UFOs and extraterrestrial life, the project was supposed to help figure out whether these sightings posed a threat to national security and to scientifically analyze the phenomena associated with them. Throughout its operation, Project Blue Book engaged in various activities centered around UFO sightings, this included collecting data from military and civilian reports, interviewing witnesses, and conducting scientific analyses of the evidence gathered. The Air Force created a formal process for documenting UFO sightings, which allowed them to compile a comprehensive database of reports. Investigators often looked into the backgrounds of witnesses and scrutinized the circumstances surrounding each sighting to assess their credibility. While Project Blue Book was framed publicly as a legitimate investigation into UFO phenomena, skeptics believe it served as a means to discredit such reports and reassure the public that there was nothing to fear. Many of the conclusions drawn in the project's final report have been criticized for being overly dismissive of credible sightings. This has led to widespread speculation that the Air Force was not interested in uncovering the truth about UFOs, but rather in controlling the narrative around them. In its final report, released in 1969, Project Blue Book concluded that the majority of UFO sightings could be explained by natural phenomena, misidentified aircraft, or other conventional explanations. The report categorized approximately 12% of the cases as unidentified which included sightings that defied easy classification. The secrecy surrounding the project, particularly regarding its funding and internal findings, only made conspiracy theories about government cover-ups and alien encounters grow. To this day, people believe that the program was just so the government could quickly discredit the UFO sightings while continuing to learn the truth about them in secret, so no one would have the information they would otherwise. Operation Paperclip Werner von Braun and many of the other ex-Nazi scientists smuggled out of Germany at war's end had played a huge part in one of the proudest chapters in America's history. After World War II, the US government secretly recruited German scientists, engineers and technicians to strengthen American military and intelligence capabilities. Launched in 1945, Operation Paperclip aimed to gain expertise in rocket science and aeronautics, especially as Cold War tensions began to rise. One of the most infamous people from this operation was Werner von Braun. He had been a key player in developing the V-2 rocket for Germany. After the war, the US brought him over, 
and he became a crucial part of NASA's early space program. His work helped the U.S. achieve significant milestones, including the moon landing in 1969. Von Braun's journey from a Nazi engineer to American space proves how important the operation ended up being for the U.S. While the program provided technological benefits, it wasn't all done, well, legally. Recruiting individuals who had worked with the Nazi regime, including those involved in human rights abuses, wasn't exactly protocol. Many criticized the U.S. government for ignoring the dark past of these scientists in their quest for military and technological superiority. Operation Paperclip brought hundreds of other scientists to America, many of whom contributed to various aspects of the Nazi regime's scientific programs. This included research on chemical and biological warfare. The decision to hire these scientists often overshadowed the broader goals of American scientific advancement, leading to concerns about the ethics of using knowledge gained through unethical means. The legacy of Operation Paperclip is complicated. On one side, it pushed American military technology and fueled the space race, but is there no moral responsibility of hiring the people that did the work? This is something the world is still struggling with today, but we can't deny the fact that without it, our world would look totally different. The Tuskegee Syphilis Study The Tuskegee Syphilis Study is one of the most notorious examples of unethical medical research in history. Conducted by the U.S. Public Health Service from 1932 to 1972, it highlights significant moral failings in the medical field. The study aimed to observe the natural progression of untreated syphilis in African-American men, seeking to understand how the disease progressed without treatment, especially since penicillin hadn't become widely available yet. Initially, 600 African-American men from Macon County, Alabama participated, with 399 having syphilis and 201 serving as a control group. Most participants were poor and uneducated, making them particularly vulnerable to exploitation. Researchers misled these men into thinking they were receiving free health care from the government. They told them they were being treated for bad blood, a term used to describe various ailments, including syphilis, anemia, and fatigue. Even after penicillin became the standard treatment for syphilis in the 1940s, researchers deliberately withheld this effective medication. Instead, they continued to observe the men's health deteriorate, documenting the effects of untreated syphilis over decades. In 1972, investigative journalists and whistleblowers exposed the study, leading to widespread public outrage. As a result, significant changes to ethical standards for medical research emerged in the United States, including new regulations to protect human subjects. These changes mandated informed consent requirements and established oversight by institutional review boards. If that didn't happen, people might still be experimented on without their consent, even today. The Philadelphia Experiment the Philadelphia Experiment was when the U.S. Navy conducted a secret experiment during World War II. According to the legend, this experiment took place in 1943 and aimed to make a naval destroyer escort, the USS Eldridge, invisible to radar. This story has fascinated people for decades. Apparently, the U.S. military wanted to develop technology to help ships evade enemy detection. Allegedly, the Navy used a mix of electromagnetic fields and advanced tech to render the USS Eldridge invisible. Some versions even say the ship didn't just become invisible, but also teleported, moving from Philadelphia to Norfolk, Virginia in an instant. Witnesses claim that when the USS Eldridge reappeared, the crew suffered horrific consequences. Some reports describe sailors fused to the ship's hull, while others say they displayed severe psychological distress. All of these witness reports lead many to believe the government was hiding a significant technological breakthrough, or perhaps even a supernatural event. Despite its popularity, many skeptics question the Philadelphia experiment. Investigators point out numerous inconsistencies in the accounts 
of those who claimed to witness the event. For example, the USS Eldridge wasn't in Philadelphia during the alleged experiment. It was in the Bahamas for a training exercise. Plus, many of the individuals who reported the event came forward years later. The Navy officially denied that any such experiment took place and labeled the story a hoax. But that's just what they've always done any time something they were doing in secret came to light. Operation Sea Spray the Army did spray a lot of bacteria around, although they weren't the highly dangerous kind that would be used as an actual weapon. The bacteria that they used did have some health risks. Operation Sea Spray, conducted by the U.S. in the 1950s, was a secret experiment aimed at understanding the potential effects of biological warfare. But how can you really know what's going to happen until it does? Well, by doing it yourself. This operation involved the aerosol spraying of Bacillus globigii, a bacterium chosen because it was thought to be harmless to humans over San Francisco, California. The Navy's goal was to figure out how biological agents could disperse in an urban environment. By studying how the bacteria spread, the military hoped to gather valuable data on how vulnerable major cities were to airborne biological attacks. In this case, Bacillus globigii served as a stand-in for more dangerous pathogens to simulate a real biological warfare scenario without theoretically putting the population at significant risk. The experiment itself was carried out without informing the residents of San Francisco. Navy personnel released the bacteria from a ship stationed off the coast, allowing the wind to carry the aerosolized agent over the city. San Francisco's dense population and coastal location made it a prime testing ground for studying how bacteria might travel and settle over a large urban area. After the operation, some local residents began reporting respiratory issues. While no official link was confirmed between these illnesses and the bacteria, it was too much of a coincidence to ignore. As news of Operation Sea Spray eventually leaked, the lack of transparency and the potential harm it caused became a major focus of debate. The people of San Francisco were used as test subjects in a government experiment, but they never consented to any of it, which violated basic ethical principles of research and public safety. The operation exemplified the risks and moral failings of secret government experiments that involved civilian populations. In the aftermath of the experiment, Operation Sea Spray became a key example of the need for stronger ethical guidelines in military research, particularly when it involves human subjects, which is why things like that don't happen anymore. Or at least, we don't know about them yet. The Monster Study The Monster Study was a notorious stuttering experiment conducted in 1939 by Wendell Johnson, a speech pathologist at the University of Iowa. Johnson wanted to understand whether stuttering was a learned behavior or an inherent issue, believing that labeling a child as a stutterer could cause or worsen the condition. His controversial study involved 22 orphaned children from Davenport, Iowa, some of whom already had speech impediments, while others were fluent speakers, but none of them knew what was being done to them. Johnson's graduate student, Mary Tudor, carried out the sessions. The children were split into two groups. One group received positive reinforcement, where they were praised for their speech, while the other group underwent negative reinforcement. In the negative group, children were harshly criticized and told they had speech problems even if they didn't. As a result, several children who had previously spoken fluently developed stuttering and other speech issues. The psychological toll on the children was severe with many suffering long-term emotional trauma. The harmful effects of the experiment earned it the name The Monster Study. In 2007, nearly 70 years after the experiment, the state of Iowa agreed to pay $925,000 in a settlement to the surviving subjects, who were then in their 70s and 80s, and were still suffering because of something a doctor did to them in secret while studying how not to do it. The Stanford Prison Experiment 
The Stanford Prison Experiment, conducted in 1971 by psychologist Philip Zimbardo at Stanford University, was supposed to help examine the psychological impact of perceived power and authority within a simulated prison setting. Zimbardo selected 24 male college students, randomly assigning half the role of guards and the other half the role of prisoners. The experiment took place in a makeshift prison set up in the basement of the university's psychology department, where participants were expected to live out their roles over two weeks. But the experiment quickly spiraled out of control. The guards began to exhibit increasingly abusive behavior, subjecting the prisoners to humiliation, psychological torment, and dehumanizing treatment. The prisoners, in turn, displayed signs of extreme stress, emotional breakdowns, and passive acceptance of their mistreatment. Although all of the participants were aware they were part of a study, the simulated environment and power dynamics quickly blurred the lines between role-playing and reality. Originally planned to last 14 days, the experiment was abruptly halted after just six days when a fellow researcher, Christina Maslach, raised concerns about the psychological harm being inflicted on the participants. Zimbardo himself had become too immersed in his role as the prison superintendent to recognize the severity of the situation until he was confronted by her. The Stanford Prison Experiment remains one of the most controversial psychological studies in history, raising serious questions about ethics in research. The experiment's results suggested that situational factors and social roles could influence human behavior, sometimes leading ordinary people to commit abusive acts. Makes you think why we see prisons as rehabilitation facilities today and why people who go in there are allowed to reintegrate into society the way they do without anyone watching over them. Milgram Shock Experiments The Milgram Shock Experiments, conducted by social psychologist Stanley Milgram in the early 1960s, became one of the most well-known studies on human obedience. In the experiments, Milgram recruited everyday Americans who were led to believe they were participating in a study about memory and learning at Yale University. Participants were assigned the role of teachers, and they were instructed to read word pairs to learners who were actors in the study. Whenever a learner gave the wrong answer, the teacher was told to administer a shock, with the voltage increasing with each mistake. The shocks appeared to range from 15 to 450 volts, with many participants believing they were inflicting significant pain. What the teachers didn't know was that no real shocks were being delivered. The experiment's true purpose was to observe how far people would go in following orders from an authority figure, even when those orders conflicted with their personal morals. Roughly two-thirds of participants delivered the highest voltage shocks, despite hearing the learners express pain and distress. Milgram's study has remained controversial for decades. Critics argue that it lacked realism and put unnecessary emotional strain on participants, while supporters highlight its groundbreaking insight into human behavior and obedience to authority. In 2010, a replication of the study produced similar results, with about 70% of participants administering what they believed were the highest shocks, further solidifying Milgram's findings about how individuals respond to authority figures under pressure. Unit 731 Unit 731, a covert division of the Japanese military, became infamous for its gruesome biological warfare experiments during World War II. Though the Geneva Protocol of 1925 banned the use of biological weapons, Japan disregarded this ban, believing that if germ warfare was deemed dangerous enough to prohibit, it must hold real military value. By the mid-1930s, Japan began to test pathogenic and chemical warfare on human subjects at a secret facility in Manchuria, under the disguise of an innocuous epidemic prevention and water supply unit. Unit 731's operations went far beyond simple experiments. 
military physicians and officers exposed prisoners to a variety of lethal pathogens, such as anthrax, cholera, bubonic plague, and typhus, all with the intent of understanding how these diseases could be weaponized. Victims were often dissected or vivisected while still alive, without anesthesia, because the experimenters believed painkillers might interfere with the results. The goal wasn't just to study how the human body reacted to disease, but to develop biological weapons that could be deployed in bombs or through other means during military campaigns. The victims of these horrific experiments were primarily Chinese civilians and prisoners of war. It is estimated that around 100,000 people passed away as a result of experiments conducted at the Unit 731 facility. Despite the atrocities committed, those responsible for Unit 731's activities largely escaped punishment. After the war, the US granted immunity to key individuals involved in exchange for their research data. Japan, for decades, refused to acknowledge the horrors of Unit 731, with official admissions not emerging until the 1980s. The Manhattan Project the Manhattan Project wasn't just about building the atomic bomb. It also involved some disturbing experiments that ran far longer than most people realize. While the project itself officially lasted from 1942 to 1946, the impact of its research carried on for decades and not just in weapons development. As part of the effort to understand the effects of radiation, scientists conducted experiments on thousands of unsuspecting people both Americans and non-Americans, without their consent. One of the most alarming aspects was the treatment of individuals under the guise of health and safety. With workers at the project facing severe contamination risks, a dedicated team of medical professionals was tasked with figuring out how radioactive materials impacted the human body. This meant conducting secretive tests on unsuspecting people often with little concern for their well-being. The scale of these tests only became widely known decades later, thanks to journalist Eileen Wellsom's 1993 article, The Plutonium Experiment. Her research revealed that during the 1940s, federal scientists had injected 18 hospital patients across the country with plutonium without their knowledge. Even more shocking is the suggestion that J. Robert Oppenheimer himself may have approved these experiments, considering how badly contamination had affected workers at the Los Alamos labs during his time there. Which of these experiments did you find the most inhumane?